Hey guys, today's Star Wars theory is in regards to The Mandalorian Season 3 and how The Bad Batch is setting up the stage for us to understand how a new villain will come to be. I feel The Bad Batch is catalyzing The Mandalorian Season 3 in a way that hasn't really been done before like it is now. The Mandalorian and Bad Batch air at the exact same time on the same day. This means when you watch both episodes back to back, you get to understand how they are playing into one another. The Bad Batch is showing Mount Tantis in great detail, something not done before in Star Wars. In fact, something that was once Super Legends material that has many of us fans surprised that they even did this. Thanks to, of course, Dave Filoni, we now have something huge from the Legend stories from the 90s that can make Star Wars take a totally different turn into a very dark, yet interesting and fun direction. Now, before I can elaborate on this theory that I have, we must first understand what Mount Tantis is from its legend standpoint and why it's so relevant and important in The Mandalorian and of course, The Bad Batch at least for my theory here. If you already know about Mount Tantis, then feel free to skip a few minutes. Otherwise, let's deep dive and refresh our memories into the history here behind this very important Mount Tantis information. So Mount Tantis is a location in Legends, and now of course in canon in The Bad Batch. It encompassed the stories that were produced before Disney bought Lucasfilm in 2012. Mount Tantis is a massive mountain located on the planet Wayland, which is located in the deep core region of the Star Wars galaxy. It was used as a secret laboratory and storehouse by the Galactic Empire during and after the events of the original trilogy. Now, it was originally constructed by Palpatine, Darth Sidious himself, who used it to store a vast array of powerful artifacts, including Sith holocrons, lightsabers, and various other dark side relics. But that's not all he used it for. In the Heir to the Empire books, set right after Episode 6, Return of the Jedi, Mount Tantis was further established by Grand Admiral Thrawn, the infamously brilliant strategist and military commander who served as one of the last leaders of the Imperial Remnant after the fall of the Empire. Thrawn used the facility to conduct research into a variety of advanced technologies, including cloning, genetic engineering, and mind control. After the fall of the Empire and Return of the Jedi, the Imperial Warlord Grand Admiral Thrawn discovered Mount Tantis and used it as a base of operations to launch his own campaign against the New Republic. Thrawn utilized this facility's cloning technology to create a massive army of soldiers, which he intended to use to conquer the galaxy. Now, eventually, the New Republic discovered Mount Tantis and it was a full-out war. There were massive losses on both sides, but in the end, of course, the New Republic was the winner, and Mount Tantis was destroyed destroyed in a massive explosion. It served as a symbol of the dark side and dangerous secrets that the Empire was willing to hide away from the public like they did most things in its quest for power and control. Now, in the Bad Batch, we got to see them run experiments on the Zillow Beast, of course, or the Zillow Beast clone, but that's really not all that they were cloning. As we saw in The Mandalorian Season 2, when Cara Dune, Grief Karga, and Mando infiltrated that facility, there was a lot of cloning going around. And of course, Dr. Pershing having the patch that he does on his shoulder, being a scientist of the cloning facility on Kamino, we know some nefarious stuff is going on. Now, Thrawn and Legends used the secret research facility at Mount Tantis to develop a variety of advanced technologies, and not just cloning, but weapons and future tech for the remnants of the Empire. Now, I'm going to go over a few of them because I think they're pretty cool. First off, cloning technology. This is a no-brainer. However, he did develop a variety of techniques and technologies which actually sped up the cloning process better than the Kaminoans did. And he did this through Sparty cloning cylinders. This was a specialized type of cloning cylinder which allowed for the rapid production of clones with a high degree of genetic stability. So when you're cloning anything, especially Force Sensitives, some of them might come out absolutely insane. And we saw this in The Force Unleashed 2 when they tried to clone Galen Merrick, creating Starkiller. There were so many different variations of him which had to be destroyed because he was just mentally unfit. Either he didn't have any Force sensitivity, or he was just insane. Now, of course, these cylinders were later used by other Imperial commanders to create armies of clones to serve the Empire. The next thing he created were gravity well projectors. Thrawn developed a series of specialized gravity well projectors that were used to disrupt and disable the hyperdrives of enemy starships. 
This tech allowed Thrawn to trap and isolate his enemies, making it easier for him to defeat them in battle. He also made cloaking devices, which allowed Imperial ships to become invisible to enemy sensors and scanners. Overall, a lot of the research and development that took place at Mount Tantis was instrumental in the efforts of the Galactic Empire to maintain its hold on the galaxy after Palpatine's death. The advanced technologies and weapons that Thrawn developed were what allowed the Empire to remain a formidable force in the galaxy for years to come. And I think that's what they're trying to do now in canon, especially since we know Palpatine somehow returned. Now that finally brings us to his most interesting creation with Mount Tantus' research facility and the point of this video. And that's of course the cloned Dark Jedi Joris Sabaoth in Legends. Now I don't think we're going to see Sabaoth in The Mandalorian Season 3, but will we see a dark rogue Jedi? Cloned? I think that's a possibility. I believe this is who will appear in The Mandalorian alongside Thrawn and possibly be the show's next big bad, perhaps leaking into Ahsoka. Joris Sabaoth was a clone of the Jedi Master Joris Sabaoth, created by Grand Admiral Thrawn using genetic material recovered from the Jedi's body after his death. Thrawn used his knowledge of cloning technology to create Joris Sabaoth in order to serve as his personal Jedi advisor and enforcer. Now, the clone was imbued with Sabaoth's force abilities and his memories, and this allowed him to serve as a powerful tool for Thrawn's schemes. After Thrawn's defeat and death at the Battle of Bilbringi, Joris was left without a master, so he then began to develop his own plans for power, using his force abilities to manipulate those around him and amass a following of loyal followers. This could be something that will happen in The Mandalorian Season 3, where of course we'll have Thrawn being the big bad, but we could have this dark rogue Jedi clone who will eventually amass his own army. And I don't see them killing Thrawn off, but I see them having these two characters in tandem and creating this massive army which will require the help of other good guys. I think the introduction of a dark rogue Jedi clone would be really cool and it kind of fits with the overall theme of Mando, which has focused on the exploration of different aspects of the Star Wars universe. It would also provide an opportunity to delve deeper into the history of the Galactic Empire and the various factions that sought to maintain its power after the fall of the Emperor. This could be the being that dies before Snoke is created, ultimately perhaps a better vessel or perhaps the last vessel option for Palpatine to transfer his consciousness into or to somehow control, and in the end he was just left with a mangled up Snoke. A dark Jedi clone would likely be an incredibly powerful adversary, capable of using the force to manipulate the environment around him, and of course overpower the Mandalorian and his allies in combat. Just imagine like a young Palpatine, essentially. This would make it much more difficult for Mando to complete his quest and protect Grogu, who of course remains a high priority target for various factions in the galaxy, especially for those at Mount Tantis, like Dr. Pershing, who I assume has been ordered to get the child back to run more diagnostics, more tests, and probably harvest his blood. But we have to ask ourselves, why? What if they want his blood or his midichlorians for? I think it's to create the perfect vessel that could be for Palpatine to transfer his essence into. Now, this Dark Jedi could be hired by Thrawn, it could be created by Thrawn, or perhaps some other being created him. Maybe the Empire's remnants, Moff Gideon, perhaps. However Dave Filoni and Jon Favreau want to spin the story and amalgamate legends with canon, Hopefully it'll be cool. This of course could force Luke Skywalker to return once again in full force against a force user, or maybe even Ahsoka, or heck man, maybe both to fight this powerful opponent. In addition to posing a physical threat, a dark Jedi clone could also have a very profound psychological impact on Grogu. As we have seen in previous seasons, Grogu has a strong connection to the force, and it's much stronger now that he spent two years with Luke training according to Jon Favreau, and he's particularly sensitive to the presence of other Force users. So if he were to encounter a Dark Jedi clone, it could potentially traumatize him and send him into a whirlwind that could cause lasting emotional damage, maybe making him dark himself or kind of confused or disillusioned. This could take him back to when he was taken from the temple and the dark time that he endured, which we know about from Ahsoka telling us. Furthermore, 
If the Dark Jedi clone is revealed to have ties to the Empire or other factions that seek to control or exploit the Force, it could provide important context for Grogu's backstory and his role in the wider Star Wars universe. We could learn more about the nature of Grogu's powers and the ways in which he may be targeted or sought after by other Force users in the galaxy. Overall, the introduction of a Dark Jedi clone as the primary antagonist, or maybe even the sub-primary antagonist after Thrawn in The Mandalorian Season 3 would provide an opportunity to explore new heights and aspects of the Star Wars universe, and challenge the show's characters in new and exciting ways. It would be very interesting to see how The Mandalorian and his allies navigate this new threat, and how it impacts Grogu's development as a character. Will it bring him out of his shell and make him super saiyan, super powerful, or will it regress him and make him go into a dark, dark state? Either way, I would love to see a dark rogue Jedi at some point in Star Wars, and I think bringing that into the Mandalorian somewhere in the sidelines or in the background, kind of brewing and festering, would be pretty cool maybe to bring him into season 4 or throw him into Ahsoka somewhere. I think it would really help develop Mando's character overall as a being and a character in the story, as well as Grogu's and all of the Mandalorians to come together and fight this worthy adversary which I think is the theme of The Mandalorian Season 3, having all of these warring Mandalorian factions who hate each other for many years, causing so much infighting and civil war to eventually come together for a greater cause and perhaps defeat the enemy before them. Thanks for watching today's theory video. Let me know what you think. Do you want to see a dark Jedi clone or rogue Jedi or something like that in The Mandalorian Season 3 or in Ahsoka? Or are you kind of hoping that this Jedi that we'll eventually see is just Barriss Offee? That's also another theory that I got, especially when it comes to the Ahsoka show. Thanks for watching today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. Leave a like if you did. Catch me on all my social media and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, remember, the Force will be with you always.